Hello chat friends and welcome to the of Chess channel and welcome back to our best chess games of all time series. So in this series we're covering the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I've decided to show a really beautiful game that was played in 2016 between the two legends of the sport between Vasily Topalov and Vasily Sol. So this um, game is really incredible and I think this game is a very important study in the Italian game. Um, I think many of us have tried out the Italian game and it's a very popular and still uh, decent opening for both both sides so it's a double-edged opening there are many great games from black's perspective there are many great games from white's perspective so many top grand masters of these days still use of course the italian game but i think this game shows a very important study as i said in the italian game when your opponent is playing the move bishop to g5 when your opponent is spinning the knight on f6 and probably many of us played this idea h6 g5 kicking with the bishop and when the bishop retreats to g3 then uh, the question is should we still castle kingside because we have to say we have already weakened the pawn structure there and then it's very very hard of course to castle on that side where we have created already some structural weaknesses but actually here in this game vastly so will show that actually it is possible to castle on this side of the board uh, to castle still on the king side although you have weakened uh, the pawn structure by moving the pawn to h6 and g5 and this show uh, this game will also show the power of the dashko bishop when the dashko bishop comes here on this diagonal so many times i like to call it the Gioco piano bishop when this bishop is very very powerful causes of course some tactical get damage around the square after so i think these two elements we'll see here really in a beautiful way uh played by vastly so with the black pieces so i think italian games uh, italian opening players would simply love this approach by vastly so so let's see now the game uh, here as Said the vessel in Topalo with the white pieces open with the move e4. We have e5 by Wesley. We have knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and after bishop to c5, we have now the Gioco Piano, uh, the Italian game was on the board. So here, after move c3, we have now this classical variation we're trying in the near future, uh, maybe not immediately, but now with the move d4, we're trying to create a breakthrough and kick away the bishop from the square c5. So that's why black is counterplaying this idea many times with the move knight to f6, attacks the weak e4 pawn so we have now d3 this is now the most classical system of the italian game supporting simply the pawn on e4 and in the near future we can expect maybe a maneuver by the bishop bishop to b3 bishop to c2 where the bishop is protecting the pawn on e4 and then the d4 pawn breakthrough would make sense because then the e4 is simply protected but of course we have to also secure first the king by castling and similar ideas so here in the continuation we have now a6 and you can also play the move a5 i think uh, uh, both of these ideas are working because uh, both of these ideas are creating uh, breathing spaces for the bishop but i think this a6 is uh, more tactical approach i think to the game because still you want to play something like b5 the move a5 is a more positional approach because okay you're not maybe allowing here white to make a b4 move and then maybe further push the pawn to a b5 but of course we have to say this a5 makes also a little bit this two squares weak the b5 is a little bit weak also the d5 square is a little bit weak so it's part probably part of your approach part of your uh, style when uh, how you play chess in my opinion a6 as i said is simply more aggressive approach with the potential b5 move a5 is a more positional approach so here after move a6 we have now a4 by vesley topalov so he's not allowing here this move b5 by vesley so so we have the d6 and now comes this pinning idea with the move bishop to g5 and this could be really unpleasant because as we said in the beginning of the video if we get some kind of a maneuver like bishop to b3 bishop to c2 then d4 and e5 if that happens of course this knight could be endangered uh, that's now the potential beauty about this particular line by uh, Vesen Topalov or what we could do maybe somehow in the near future maneuver this knight to d5 where it could cause of course more tactical damage around the square f6 so it's quite unpleasant of course to play against this bishop so that's why I think this game as I said in the beginning beginning of the video is a very important study of the italian game so that's why first bishop to a7 improving the position of the dark square bishop and still i'm uh, pointing out this bishop will be very important in the continuation of this game so here in the continuation we have knight from b to d2 we have now this idea h6 we have bishop to h4 and now g5 and many times i've been asked how also this question if this is working knight to uh, g5 actually this is not the problem because after bishop uh, h6 g5 bishop to g5 there is now 
somehow a good way to defend everything you can play simply rook to g8 if h4 happens then we can play queen to e7 and probably queen to f3 is going to happen but now with rook to g6 you can defend simply this knight on f6 and um, white didn't gain anything in the near future i think we can expect some ideas of bishop to g4 and then queenside casting securing the king and okay maybe a white could have some fun by playing some b4 b5 ideas but the evaluation here is plus two for black black is up a whole piece so in my opinion this tactical shot is not working so uh here after move uh, bishop to g3 was played by Veslin topalov and now kingside casting and this as i said is a very very important study because notice that we have already weakened the pawn structure with the move h6 g5 so there are many many weaknesses in in our position uh, that can be used of course by white in order to attack further but uh still it's a playable line because uh, for instance in this particular scenario the engine gives here equal chances for both sides so nothing went wrong here for black white doesn't have now huge huge attack even if you try some ideas of um, h4 here maybe to open the position we'll just pass through with the move uh, g4 now you have to step back with knight to h2 and with h5 you can support everything and this should be perfectly fine position now for uh for for, for black you don't have to i think even secure the uh, the pawn like this you can play king to g7 you can then play something like rook to h8 you can even i think maneuver here the queen and then uh, get the uh, king to f8 then you have also maybe some other attacking opportunities in the near future maybe you could use also some tactical ideas of knight to h5 then knight to g3 getting some damage here around the square after so so many beautiful then attacking ideas i think uh, black could have in the continuation of the game so that's why as we said opening the position here doesn't work for white many times you would love of course maybe uh, that your opponent takes and then with rook to h4 of course you could have then good attacking chances on the h file but of course as we said with the move g4 black can solve all of the position problems so here after move kingside counting was played by West and Topalo, we have knight to h7, preparing now also the move f5, but also supporting further uh, the g5 square. So we have now uh, h3, creating some breathing spaces for the bishop, because in many occasions f5, then even f4 could happen, and then the bishop could get trapped. So, but notice now, after move h2, uh, pardon me, h3, uh, the bishop is a little bit loose on the board. So many times, some tactical ideas of queen to g3 are working, or rook to g3, when we take out the, uh, the bishop, but you you cannot take because of this bishop's activity here on this diagonal so you should not forget about this tactical shot and this tactical shot will be very important in the continuation of the game so here in the, uh, after move h3 h5 was played so you see vastly so is simply continuing the pressure on the king side that's why i think this is a very important study of the italian game so we have now d4 there is of course this rule which says when you get attacked on the flanks you should counter attack in the center now um basically west and topal applied this idea in the continuation we had e takes d4 knight to d4 and now vastly so continues with his plan he's not even taking out the knight on d4 um he could have taken probably the pawn here if for instance this continuation would be like this knight to d4 then c takes d4 okay you can maybe kick away the bishop bishop to h2 okay you can maybe even take out uh this pawn on d4 but now after knight to f3 bishop to b2 rook to b1 bishop to g7 okay you have taken out two pawns but i think uh, now with the move e5 uh, this is now not a good position anymore for for black although the engine gives here equal chances but i still would love now to play the game from white's perspective because look at this we have now a beautiful b file attack even if you take we can simply to play play queen to b3 queen to c2 now we're threatening even some ideas of queen to g6 so now we can use maybe this file knight uh, pawn will hang on here on e5 so the pawn on c7 is weak we can use maybe both of these rooks on the d file on the e file so the compensation that white will get in this scenario is beautiful white will have i think such a dominant position in the center of the board although down some pawns but the attacking formation is very very hard to handle now for black so that's why after move knight to d4 here vastly so stuck to his plan he simply continues his pressure on the king side with the move g4 we have h takes g4 and after h takes g4 we have now knight to c6 okay b takes c6 and let's stop and evaluate now the position uh here for both sides we have to say it, uh the bishop is very powerful here also this is a powerful bishop although it's a little bit blocked out by its own pawn but this pawn is very annoying to handle it 
causes of course a space advantage for black uh, white doesn't want to tolerate of course such an annoying pawn here and what we have to say also the knight on g4 could come uh, maybe here after uh, queen to uh, uh, knight to g5 pardon or queen to g5 will happen then knight to f6 knight to h5 as we said you are a little bit pressured here the bishop on g3 is such a bad piece now and this uh, piece will um, uh, vest is so will use now in order to attack the position further what you have to do in order to make something out of this position is finally maybe to simplify the game by opening the center and that's exactly what vest and topalov try to do open the center maybe trade off the queens and simplify the game because okay uh white has still a much much healthier pawn structure black has this double pawn structure and in the near future maybe this could be a clear target and then for white but the vest is so plays i think the correct idea play simply d5 locks the center and now comes one of the critical moments of the game so here bishop to e2 was played by vest and topalov although probably uh, the better idea is to play bishop to d3 at least with this move you're creating new attacking chances on this diagonal so maybe this was simply time to play the game like this but after move bishop to e2 you're already saying okay i will try to take out this annoying pawn on g4 but actually this is not possible because this pawn is very very protected so far uh by the bishop and in the near future this um, pawn can be also protected with the move f5 or with the move knight to f6 so queen to g5 so in my opinion this doesn't make sense to just attack one pawn when the pawn can be really really protected so maybe as i said bishop to d3 was a slightly better idea here for white in the continuation of the game but after move bishop to e2 now comes queen to g5 first protecting the pawn on g4 we have now a5 uh, with the same idea to play rook to a4 and then continue the pressure on on g4 so as i said uh, for a human eye and for a black bad player like i am this would be also probably my idea in the continuation of the game but as i said when you put now the pgn into some engines then the engines are showing um, better solutions of course of the position although as i said probably i would also attack this pawn on g4 and hope for the best so, so but notice uh, even if you take out the pawn on g4 still this tactical shot is working maybe queen to g3 as we said f takes g3 is not possible because of this long diagonal attack by the dark school bishop so we have now f5 supporting uh, further uh, the pawn on g4 and also threatening a very annoying f4 move so that's why you have to take unpass on uh, e takes f6 knight to f6 and now after rook to a4 we have rook to f7 so here uh, um, vest is so is protecting now uh, the the pawn on c7 but i don't think that it was so important to protect this pawn the main idea was, was probably to play rook to h7 and then maybe something like queen to h6 or queen to h5 building a queen and rook battery on the h file and deliver checkmate so that's why here we have a rook to uh, e1 creating some breathing spaces for the for the king and now comes this idea knight to uh, knight to h5 attacking the bishop on g3 and here vets and topalov makes a bad bad decision he plays now this idea bishop to g4 he it was very tempting to take out um, this bishop but now i remove knight to g3 notice that you cannot take out uh the knight on g3 because of this pin by the bishop here we had rook to e8 it was a counter attack that vessel and topalov here tried but now for king to g7 we have a rook to c8 but this is not working because you lose the battle here around the square f2 we have uh, king to h2 and now after queen to e5 basically the game is over there's nothing that can be done in order to prevent this discovery attack on e2 here we had king to h3 but still knight to e2 uh worked and in this position wrestling topalov resigned because there's not a good way anymore to to prevent this checkmate on on g3 you can just prolong the game maybe just placing some pieces in between you maybe delivering some stupid checks on g8 and similar stuff but uh checkmate is going to happen for sure so really really great game i think although it had some inaccuracies and mistakes we have to see it you see how bad some plans can um, can work out uh, so you see vest and topal tried the attack around the score g4 um this didn't work because it was simply too slow vest is so attacked uh, simply the king side in a beautiful way activated many pieces on the king side activated the queen uh, won the battle around the square g3 eventually using this bishop power as i said placing uh the spawns h6 g5 launching a flank attack on the king side really really beautiful strategical elements of the italian game so okay i hope that you enjoyed the study i really enjoyed it because i want to get back into the, the classical stuff i want to get out of the sicilian mess that i many times play and i want to uh, study again the classical systems more the rui lopez the italian game and similar ideas maybe even the path of defense and similar stuff so uh, this was a very important study for
for me especially in the game from black's perspective how to use the spawn storm and still uh, castle on that side of the board so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game if you want to see more beautiful attacking and positional games check out my best chess games of all time series with some great games uh, by by westlands uh, western topalo west so gary kasparov magnus carlson vision and, and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course